Hey folks, so many new science articles this week on the Earth disaster cycle, the number one topic we cover in geophysics. You saw all of the articles in the morning show the last seven days, and you'll see them all broken down in detail in next month's Observer Review magazine, but let's make sure nobody gets left behind in what was a serious science week. Here's a quick rundown of the top catastrophism articles. We'll begin with the story about Earth's core, as if the rotation shift speed wasn't enough food for thought, so much for a rock-solid, immutable inner core. Already deformed, deforming further. Did they get it wrong before, thinking it was as solid as could be? I don't think so. Like every other sphere in our solar system, systemic changes are underway. That's what's happening at our core. Up next, this was the story about a seemingly scientifically impossible climate event about 6,000 years ago. It was dramatic, rapid, and we've seen the magnetic, volcanic, and tropical hydroclimate impacts of the event 6,000 years ago, the Tian Chi excursion coinciding with NOAA's event, and this was the reporting of the mid-latitude hydroclimate impacts. Up next, that was the thesis on polar summer mesospheric echoes. In the confirmation here, as clear as can be, that the radar echoes are driven by solar activities, electromagnetic input to the planet. And with last year's debunking of CO2 being blamed for the echo increase in recent decades, that means the extra juice for those extra echoes in recent decades is coming from that space energy. More coming in due to the weakening of Earth's magnetic field. We're at Jupiter up next, cracking down on another one of those we got it wrong before science stories. We've been discussing dramatic changes on Jupiter for a decade, getting more and more intense over time and with anomalies suggesting a change in its magnetic field. Here, they find its magnetic field is smaller and weaker than they thought. Was every measurement before wrong, or is this part of Jupiter's participation in the solar system shift? A quick moment to show some love for Gold Co. and GoldObservers.com, and not just because they are sponsoring our documentary on the Earth disaster cycle, but because I had no idea until I mentioned them just how many of you hold the completely false belief that silver and gold are not going to be useful in the disaster event. Can't eat gold, they say. No, but you can put silver in your consumption to boost immunity. Gold is a perfect reflector of EM radiation and Yes, folks, there's about a 99% chance that an intermediate breakdown period of 3 to 15 years is going to occur before the great disaster. During that time, better be bartering or be ready for bad news. Every serious prepper stocks metal. Catch up with us and let a bunch of fellow observers help. Goldobservers.com Now our top stories of the week. There was a part of me that was wondering if anyone was sick of seeing them talk about unusual or unexpected solar storm effects, since we have just come to expect that now. Well, that's what this was about the hundredth thing that happened during the May 2024 solar storm that should not have happened, and that's been the case since the great March 2023 magnetic anomaly. That very month, we began expressing tremendous concern over the outsized solar impacts compared to the past, when the sun wasn't doing much differently at all. It was Dr. Simonenko's paper in April of 2024 that finally gave us the best explanation. The magnetic pole shift of Earth took a large acceleration, largest anomaly yet. We are on the descent to reversal even faster. So when it happened again in the same week, the top story from this morning, it was not surprising. But what was surprising was how they described it. No more words like unexpected. They flat out say that there's a problem here because it was only a minor solar storm impact. But we got the type of ionospheric impacts that are almost never reported unless we're in a major solar storm. Their guess as to why it happened is educated but limited. Perhaps if this was the only such occurrence, we could accept a random event explanation, but not when it's been every solar storm for two years, on top of a lesser extreme version of this issue since about 2011. Folks, scientists are noticing so hard, they're starting to talk like we do. Interesting. As I said, all of these articles will be broken down more along with every other top science news item of the month. Yesterday's issue of the e-magazine, Observer Review, you guys are already agreeing it's the best one yet. Sign up at the link below and then at the members page, access everything we've published in one place instantly. Quite a week. We'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.